Hey, how's it going, duty sulfurs? Got a good one for you today. Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can sand down, paint, and fix the hood on this F-150 truck using nothing but rattle cans. So if you look closely, we have two areas that are badly damaged on this hood. We have this area on the left corner that has a lot of scrapes, scratches, and peeling clear coat on it. And then this area on the right corner with similar type of damage. In order to perform this repair, you'll need a couple of different grits of sandpaper, a sanding block, some primer, some color match urethane base coat inside a can, and last but not least, some 2K clear coat. Now there might be a couple of other things that you might need, like masking tape and whatnot, but if you're interested in any of the products that I'm going to be using in this video, I'll put links to where you can buy them for cheap down below in the description box, so don't be afraid to click on them and check them out yourself. So obviously, as one would imagine, doing this with rattle cans is not gonna be as good as spraying your base coat and clear coat with a high volume, low pressure spray gun, but that requires an air compressor and a garage, which not everyone has. Hence our attempt to do this with rattle cans. Now I have not painted a panel before using just rattle cans, but I have a good feeling that this is gonna come out looking really nice. And as long as you follow the steps in this video exactly, you should have the same results. So make sure you watch this video all the way to the end. All right, enough of that, let's get on to the repair procedure. So what you'll want to do next is to grab yourself a clean bucket of water, pour in some car wash soap, and then using a sponge, thoroughly clean the panel that's going to be repaired. Now, some of you have mentioned it's actually better to use a dishwashing detergent to clean up a panel before paint work because these car wash soaps have some wax preservatives in them and that could ruin a paint job by causing fish eye. But dishwashing detergents, unlike these, actually strip away grease and wax. As it says, right on the back of this thing, right here, it says dishwashing detergents strip wax protection and leave paint vulnerable to the elements. But I don't have any dishwashing detergents here at the shop because dishwashing is for ladies. Plus, I'm gonna be using some wax and grease remover later, so it's not gonna be a huge issue. See, I wasn't being sexist. I only use paper plates, plastic forks, and foam cups. No need to wash dishes. That's only for the ladies. All right, next we grab ourselves a clean bucket of water and using a clean sponge, thoroughly clean our panel. And it goes without saying, this would be a lot more efficient if you have a garden hose. All right, now with the panel all clean, you guys might be able to tell better what's going on. Now, if you're wondering, this line here is because I had some masking paper here. I was going to try to repair the clear coat only, on this panel, but then I realized, you know, this clear coat is just too far out gone. Plus, I think more people are interested in seeing how you can spray both base coat and clear coat using rattle cans. All right, now your base coat, that's the coat that gives your car its color, is really, really thin, which means it cannot fill in or cover any deep scratches or rough surfaces like these. It can only fill in and cover scratches left by a 400 grit sandpaper. Now, 400 grit sandpaper is not particularly a coarse sandpaper, so in order to remove these chit paint on this panel, we're going to use some 220 grit sandpaper, which is a bit more coarse than a 400 grit sandpaper. And it should make easy work of this peeling clear coat. So the plan for this panel is to apply base coat to the front where the damages are, and then blend that into the middle section of the panel, and then apply clear coat to the entire panel. Also, if you're new to this stuff, I recommend use some masking tape to create boundaries for your repair areas. Because let's say we're gonna be sanding this area down up to here with 220 grit sandpaper. After that, we're gonna be applying primer and we're gonna go past a few inches just to make sure we cover everything we sanded. And then after we apply primer, we're gonna be sanding that down with 400 grit sandpaper. And again, we're gonna go a few inches above that because over that, we're gonna be applying base coat. So if you're not careful, your repair area can expand. So get yourself some masking tape and create yourself a boundary below which you're going to be sanding with 220 grit sandpaper. All right, so here's a look at the boundary we have so far. Also, if you peel back the tape like this, this will help to ensure that your sanding block does not accidentally go over this and scratch beyond this. But anyway, when you're sanding, just try to stop short about an inch before you get to the boundary line. Also, it's very important to get some tape and put it on the edges of the adjacent panels so you don't accidentally scratch them when you're sanding. And you wanna do this all the way to the top on both sides because you're gonna eventually have to sand down the entire panel anyway. And next, you grab yourself a sanding block like this. I like to use these soft sanding blocks. On these, the gray side is a little bit more soft 
than the black side. And if you're wondering for this job, I'm gonna be using the black side, which is a little bit more firm. So you wanna make sure that it lays flat against the panel. All right, so next, you just simply wrap your sanding paper around your sanding block. And then you simply go at it until you have a smooth surface. And for this, you are going to need some elbow grease. Again, link in the description box down below. So here's a close-up shot of what you'll need to do. Basically, you want to get the areas that look like this to look like this, nice and smooth. You simply keep going at it until that happens. See, we're expanding here, and these white marks, these white areas, this is your primer. You don't want to sand over these too much because you don't want to go through the primer and get to bare metal. So you want to move away from the areas where you see white. So yeah, we're just going to move lower. Also, it's a good idea to have a damp microfiber towel to clean the area as you're sanding so you can check your work and know exactly where you are. Oh yeah, you might as well have one in. Alrighty, 25 minutes later, here's what we have. On this side where we had deeper rock chips, I had to go deeper. As a result, you can see some of the white primer that was underneath our base coat. But like in this area where we have the smaller rock chips, primer should be able to take care of these, no problem. And here's a look at the other side as well. And I did manage to stay just short of our border for the most part. All right, next in preparation for spraying primer, I am actually going to remove our masking tape where our border is because as you can see, there is some sanding dust that's stuck right underneath it and we need to clear that up. Because when you start spraying primer, that's gonna go airborne and get all over the place and you don't want that to happen. So we're just gonna remove that and then clean that up and then reapply our masking tape to the same exact area. There we go. So once again, we'll clean the area with some clean water. Make sure you're very thorough. Then get yourself a clean microfiber towel. And then dry off your repair area. You can obviously air dry it if you have an air compressor. Next, we'll grab ourselves some grease and wax remover. And then using another clean microfiber towel, we're going to thoroughly clean the area where we're going to be spraying primer. And you know, you can just make two passes and then flip your uh, microfiber towel over and do the rest of it. And this stuff works great and it evaporates quickly as well. So once again, we're gonna mark our repair area and you wanna go about an inch, inch and a half just above where you see the 220 sand scratches, all right? And again, peel back the masking tape. All right, now as far as what type of primer you wanna spray, you wanna keep a couple of things in mind. The first thing is that you wanna spray a high-built primer so that it can fill in the 220 grit sand scratches and the rock chips you see here. And the other thing is that you wanna pick a color that's the same or very close to your base coat. So here, our base coat is pretty much black, so we preferably want a black primer or maybe a gray primer. But most important of all, you wanna pick a primer that's compatible with your urethane-based base coat clear coat. See these Rust-Oleum primers that they sell at the AutoZone? These are not compatible with your base coat clear coat. So these are lacquer-based primers and if you spray these on your panel and then spray your urethane-based base coat and clear coat, these are gonna bleed through that and you're gonna be able to see it and it's not gonna look good. Also, if you can afford it, you should use a 2K primer, which is what I have here, instead of a 1K primer. See, a 2K primer is basically a two-part primer. It's got the primer inside and the catalyst towards the bottom, and you mix them right before you're ready to spray it. And the way you go about mixing them is to first shake the can for two minutes straight. Next, you'll remove this red plastic cap up top, and then place it on the bottom like this, and put the can upside down, and with your hand, press this in all the way. Like that, and now, the catalyst is mixed with the primer. And once more, you're gonna have to shake the can for two minutes before you start spraying. And generally speaking, these 2K primers, they're just much more durable and they also sand a lot better. Oh yeah, before we start spraying, we need to cover up our car. And for that, I like to use these plastic drop cloths. They are 10 by 20 feet and they make the job a lot easier. Oh, and if I remember correctly, they're only about five bucks or so. Yep, you just open it up, throw it over the car like this. Then get yourself a razor blade and simply cut around the area that's to be painted, like this. And then just peel this back to the border and then get yourself some more masking tape and then simply tape the plastic in place, like this. 
As I said earlier, it's important to back mask the tape in the middle of the panel so that when you spray the primer, you don't have a big line here. Oh, all right before we start spraying, we're gonna maximize our fan area that's going to be coming out of this can by turning this plastic top clockwise, like this. And the absolute last step before we start spraying our primer is to tack down our panel with a tack cloth. And we're gonna spray with 50% overlap and make sure you start spraying before you start moving your arm. So here's what it looks like after our first pass. So now we're just gonna wait 10 minutes and apply a second coat. And I'm not sure what color this primer is gonna look like on camera, but it's gray in real life. All right, time for our second pass. Gonna put this on a little heavier. Ten minutes later, time for our third and final coat. All right, next, since it's about freezing temperature here in Southern California, which is exactly about 65 degrees Fahrenheit, we're gonna have to wait an hour before we can start sanding this down. And that means it's time for lunch. And what's for lunch? A California burrito. What else? And here's what you want to get in your California burrito. No salsa, sour cream, French fries, cheese, and just the carne asada. And that's it. And then you add your own hot sauce. And this is gonna come out super good. Giving you guys so much today. All right, so it's been an hour, and now we're ready to start sanding our primer. But before we take off our masking paper, it's a good idea to do a quick spray of a different color primer or paint on this primer. And I'm gonna be using this red 1K primer for this, and this is basically a guide coat. This is gonna help you know exactly where you sand it and where you have it. And here you have it. This is what you want it to look like. Alrighty, once again, we get a razor blade. And we're gonna cut this plastic all the way to the top of the hood. And then we just peel this back. And once again, just about an inch or so above our primer, we're gonna put a masking tape to limit where our 400 grit sand scratches are going to go. All right, next we'll grab ourselves a 400 grit sandpaper. And again, using the black side of our sanding block, we're going to sand down our panel. You don't wanna go super crazy, you just wanna make sure you have a smooth surface. There we go. And and this guide code we sprayed on here is going to help us greatly in finding out exactly where we've sanded and where we have it. And the most important area to sand properly is going to be this edge right here. You want to make sure this looks like this so that when you spray your base coat, you don't see it later on. Because if you leave it like this, you will see it. Here's what it looks like 15 minutes in. You guys want to take a guess where we need to keep sanding. And here's how it looks like all done. And we were able to effectively get rid of our edge. So now we're gonna remove the masking tape that we had here. And now we're going to sand down the rest of the panel with some 1500 grit sandpaper. You know what, since I don't wanna wet sand this panel, I'm actually going to use a gray scotch Bright pad to scuff it up. And I don't wanna wet sand because if you wet sand and water gets on the primered areas, then generally speaking, you need to wait about four hours, so maybe even overnight, for the primered area to completely dry before you start spraying your base coat. Just make sure you scuff up the edges because if you don't, that's where your new clear coat is gonna start peeling from. Also make sure you go a few inches into the areas where you have the 400 grit scratches because base coat can stick to both 400 grit and 1500 grit scratches. But it can only fill in and cover 400 grit scratches and finer. Oh yeah, and this isn't any scotch bright pad. This is a auto body and refinishing scotch bright pad. Again, link in the description box. All right, all done, as you can see. Our panel is nicely scuffed up. All right, next we're gonna need to clean the heck out of this panel before we start spraying our base coat. What I'm going to do is to use a lot of grease and wax remover on this area where we have the clear coat. This area where we have the base coat is pretty clean, so I'm, just gonna, I'm not gonna rub too much grease and wax remover into that, but this area is gonna get completely clean. Also, we have sand dust everywhere, and we need to get all of that cleaned up. Now, you at home may not have an option, but it might just be a better idea for you to just use a garden hose and completely wash down your car with water before you go on to the grease and wax remover. But over here I have an air compressor so I can just use that to dust off the car. Oh yeah, don't forget to dust off yourself. Now it's time for some grease and wax remover action. And next what we wanna do is to start spraying our base coat. 
what you want to do is to get your uh, paint coat, which is usually either on a sticker inside your uh, driver's side door jam or your glove box or your spare tire well and take that to your local auto body shop supply store and have them uh, mix that and put it inside of a spray can like this. And I'm hoping one of these will do the job here today, but you may need to. We're about to find out. Also, not all auto body supply stores will put this in a can for you. But again, if you want to buy it online, link in the description box down below. And again, last step before we start spraying is to tack down our entire panel. Then we start spraying, same pattern and everything as we sprayed our primer. Uh-oh, Houston, we may have a problem. I'm kidding, this is normal. We may yet still have a problem, but <laughs> it's too early to tell anyway. Oh, and now we wait 10 minutes before our second coat. Oh, and I might have forgot to mention that for now, we're just gonna spray in the primary area. After we cover this area, then we'll blend into the rest of the panel later. All right, 10 minutes later, we're going to first tack down our panel once more and do our second coat. Here's a look after our second pass. Now this is starting to look more like it. 10 minutes later, we tack it down once more. And now it looks even better. We might be able to pull this off with one can after all. I think just one more coat and then do the blend area and that should do it. Alrighty, we got pretty good coverage in our primary area. Now in order to do our blend, what I'm gonna do is to just put one, one medium coat right here and then move up 50% and do a light coat and that should blend it into the rest of the panel. So here you have it folks. There's some glare in this picture, I know, and it's gonna be kind of hard seeing what's going on, but I think you guys get the right idea. And now we just wait an hour and then spray our clear coat. Alrighty, now we're ready to start spraying our clear coat. Now as far as what type of clear coat you wanna spray, well, if you can get your hands on one, you wanna spray a 2K clear coat because you're probably going to need to wet sand and polish the clear coat later, and you really can't polish a 1K clear coat, you're probably just gonna burn right through it. And these mix the same way as the primer. You move this from up top, put them on the bottom, and push them in like that. And then you shake it for two minutes. And then you tack down your panel one last time. After this, you're not going to be able to tack down your panel, of course. And then you start spraying. There's one half, not too shabby, eh? And here's the second half. Now we just wait about 10 minutes before we spray our second coat. All right, after our second pass, here's what we have. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it came out a little streaky, the clear coat on this end. And also somewhat orange peely, but that's to be expected after all, you're spraying clear coat out of a spray can. But both of those issues can be fixed with some wet sanding and polishing. So next, I'm just gonna wait another 10 minutes and then spray whatever clear coat is left in that can on this panel and then be done with clear coat. All right, 10 minutes later, and with whatever is left in this can, I'm just gonna go over this, where I see the streaks. I'm gonna go over them this way, towards the center of this panel, so I can hopefully get rid of them.
And now I'm just gonna wait an hour and then take off the masking tape and this plastic sheet and give you guys a final look. All right, an hour later, here's a look at our panel. We got good coverage with the base coat and we were able to blend it pretty well. You can't tell where the primer and the repair area was. But it is going to need some wet sanding and polishing as one would expect. You will also need to polish the adjacent panels just so that the newly painted panel doesn't stand out on your car. And with that said, going to wrap this up. If you enjoyed watching this video, do me a favor and share this video on your favorite social network. And also check out these other related videos of which I'll put links to on this side of the screen that you can click on. There will also be links in the description box down below as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.